Hi, my name is Stephanie Ishi, and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Florida in the Department of Environmental Engineering Sciences. And today we're going to be going over fluorescent spectroscopy and how to take those measurements. Uh, you use this machine in our lab to characterize dissolved organic matter, so that's one thing to, it's important to remember, it's dissolved organic matter, so make sure all of your samples are filtered before taking fluorescence measurements. Um, a couple other things to make sure you do to your samples before you try using this piece of equipment is to make sure that all your samples are brought to room temperature, that they're all at relatively the same pH and ionic strength. To get started, the first thing you want to do is turn on the fluorescent spectrophotometer. The power switch is over here in the bottom corner. And then if you turn this on before you turn on the computer, the software that goes along with that equipment will automatically show up. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to go over is how to actually set up your method in the software before you start taking measurements. The first thing you want to do is click up here in the upper right hand corner and it's a little box that says method. So you go ahead and click on that and this box will pop up. Uh, if you go to load, which is this little option right here, a list of uh, pre-existing methods will show up. I've typically been using EEM4, so you can select that method and open it again. Um, you can either use that method as it is, as I've set it up, or you can go ahead and edit it. Um, in order to edit the method, you'd go over to this second tab, which is Instrument. In the Instrument tab, you have all the specifics that pertain to that method. The scan speed is 1500 nanometers per minute. If you are worried about losing information and you want to get a better definition of your EEM, you can choose a slower scan speed but I found that 1500 nanometers per minute works pretty well and it equates to about a nine minute sampling time per sample. The rest of the tabs up here uh, pertain to how the data will be given back to you. You don't really need to worry about that right now because you can alter your data during analysis in MATLAB. So at this point I think our method is pretty much good to go and I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now the machine as well as the software itself is going to go ahead and set itself up with the parameters that you just identified. And just to make sure that everything went the way that you thought, you can check up here in this corner and you should see that your excitation wavelength is whatever you said it should start at. Your emission wavelength is also whatever you said it should start at. And then your two slit widths are designated. So now that your method's all set up, you can go ahead and start taking fluorescence measurements. The first thing you want to do is find the cuvette. It's going to be in the drawer that's right to the right of the fluorescent spectrophotometer. It's in this black plastic box. When you're handling the cuvette, try and make sure that you're using gloves, first of all, but also that you are touching just the corners of the cuvette so that you can minimize the amount of smudging that you put on the walls. So the first thing you want to do is just rinse out the cuvette three times with deionized water. Uh, you know, of course, after you take measurements, you're supposed to wash it, but just in case the person behind you had maybe had a very uh, organic, rich sample or something with precipitates, it's always good to wash it out. So once it's washed out, you know, just give it a quick visual check, make sure that everything looks good. Uh, and the first thing you're going to do is just take a fluorescence measurement of the deionized water itself. You're going to use that data to later subtract it out of your sample data. Basically what you're doing is subtracting out the effect of water fluorescence and only ending up with the fluorescence that's due to your organic matter. Um, so in order to fill it, just grab one of these DI bottles. And you want to do it uh, relatively gently. I like to put the tip of this in the corner of the cuvette so you get minimal air bubbles. You fill it on up. The cuvette is about five milliliters. And you can look to make sure that you didn't get any air bubbles. And if you see little tiny ones, you can just tap it on the counter. Um, I do it on the mouse pad just because the cuvettes are relatively fragile and very expensive, so we don't want to break them. So once you're done with the air bubbles, you can grab a Kim wipe. Okay, so just grab a Kim wipe, make sure that all the water drops on the outside are taken off. Uh, and then again, because you've taken your samples to room temperature, there should definitely be no condensation on the edges of the cuvette. Um, if you do see some condensation, it's a sign that your water samples are a bit too cold still, and you should probably let them sit out for a little longer. All right, so no water drops on the edges. I'm then going to take the little plastic cap that's in the box and add that to the cuvette. All right, so nothing on the edges. We just open up the fluorescent spectrophotometer. And when you're putting in the cuvette, you want to make sure that the cuvette is positioned correctly. 
So if you look at one of the four walls, you're going to see a little three that's etched in the top right corner, and you want that three to be facing you. So the three right now is in this upper right-hand corner on this forward-facing wall, and then I'm going to slip the cuvette into the little spot that's designated for it. You close the cap, and then at that point you're ready to take the measurement. You go over to the computer, and again, on the right-hand side of the screen, there's a bunch of options, and you simply hit measure. After the fluorescence measurement has completed, this window is going to pop up and it just shows the data that's been collected. Um, if you don't see much going on on the graph on the uh, left hand side, don't worry about it. Um, the graph hasn't been auto scaled, so you might just have things that are not within the scale that it's currently set to. Uh, what you want to do is click over to report on the right hand side of the screen so that you can save your data for later. Click report and then oftentimes this error message is going to uh, pop up and it's okay. It just says, do you want to open the file now and just hit yes. And then if this message comes up behind it, it's something that's titled server busy, just hit switch to. And then all it's going to do is make an Excel file show up that has your fluorescence data in it. Uh, the first things that are going to show up over here are all the parameters that you've entered into that fluorescence reading. So, you know, in case you don't write down what method you've used or something, you've always got a reminder here showing you what you did. And then you can look down here and you've got this very large matrix of numbers. The first row that goes across the top of that matrix is your wavelength of excitation. So if you look at this first cube over here, first uh, cell, it says 220, so that's 220 nanometers. That was your first excitation wavelength. And then if you look at your first column, those are also wavelengths, but those are your emission wavelengths. So for example, if you look at this first cell here, that would be B32, that is the intensity of your fluorescence at an excitation wavelength of 220 nanometers and an emission wavelength of 250 nanometers. And so all of the numbers that are within those, uh, within that row and that column are in fluorescence intensities. Is just save that file. Um, you can save it to a file folder that is your initials. So for me, I'm going to go to SI, and then I'm going to save that file based on the date and the fact that it's a DI sample. Alright, so now that your DI sample has been measured and you've got the fluorescence uh, data saved, you just open it back up and take your cuvette out and dump out your DI water into a waste bucket. You don't need to worry about washing it out with DI because that's all you just measured, so um, you can go ahead and take your sample that you want to take fluorescence of. So I've got my sample here in a beaker. It's been sitting out for a couple hours, so I know that it's at room temperature. First, you want to put a bit into the cuvette that you're going to use as waste sample. All I'm doing now is making sure that the only liquid that's going to be in the cuvette is my sample and not that DI water. You don't want to get dilution of the sample. So I'm just swishing that sample around and making sure that I get all the DI drops out. And again, going to waste it. And now, now I'm going to pour in the sample for real. Um, it's about 500, five, not 500, 5 milliliters of sample that goes into this cuvette. Again, you want to pour it in pretty gently so you don't get a lot of air bubbles. I'm going to put the cap on it. And I want to wipe off any drops that I got on the outside again. And check your cuvette for air bubbles. And again, just tap it on the counter to make sure that all those air bubbles get out of your sample. And just like we did for the DI, we're going to look for the three on the side of the cuvette. And once you find your three, you make that the forward facing wall and put the cuvette back into the spectrophotometer. Close the door. And again, we're just going to hit measure. Okay, so it's been about nine to ten minutes and our fluorescence measurement has been taken. Again, you get this window that pops up with your data. So you go over to the right hand side of the screen and click on report. You get a message and it says, do you want to open the file now? We'll say yes. And then a, an Excel sheet pops up again. And so you've got, again, all of those parameters in the beginning part of your worksheet. And then you have your first row with all the excitation wavelengths and your first column with all your emission wavelengths. And if you compare this uh, worksheet to your DI worksheet, you should see that you got much higher intensities for this sample because you have organic matter in that sample fluorescing. 
A uh, one important thing to look for in this is if you just do a quick scan throughout all your intensities, you should see nothing over 10,000 uh, arbitrary units. These aren't arbitrary units. So our detector only goes up to 10,000. So if you see things that say 9999.99, that means that you got right up to the maximum of that fluorescence detector and you probably got over it you just weren't able to actually measure that. So you definitely want to look for those and if you see something that gets close to 10,000, that's an indication that you're going to need to dilute your sample. So I'm looking through here and I'm not seeing anything anywhere near 9,000 or 10,000. So I know that my sample was okay for this measurement. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and save it to my designated folder with my initials. I'm going to save it again with the date and the name of the sample. Um, and that's about it. If you do decide that you're going to dilute it, I would still save the undiluted version and then do a separate uh, fluorescence measurement with that two times, three times, four times dilution. Okay, so you can continue to do that process for as many samples as you have or as many dilutions as you have. Uh, two important things to remember are before you start all this, make sure that you let the fluorescent spectrophotometer warm up for at least an hour. Uh, that gives the lamp ample time to get to the place that you want it to be. And then when you're done taking your measurements, make sure you turn it off as soon as you're done because the lamp time is relatively precious. I'm Stephanie Ishii and that's What Are We Up To?